Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for connecting to the class uh, called Keys to Supernatural Ministry, BC205. We will have a one hour uh, class every week. And you can follow along with the notes which have been provided. For those who are in person here, you have printed copies. For those who are uh, in the online batch, you can access it from the classwork section. Those on e-learn can get it from the textbook section. So we will pray and we will begin today's session. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Lord, even as we take time in your word by your Holy Spirit, Lord, give us a good understanding, Father God, of uh, um, Lord, what the supernatural is all about. And uh, Father, we pray, God, that um, each one of us will experience your power and your glory in our lives, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for making it available to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, the first session for today is um, just to get an understanding uh, about the supernatural. So we will look at the first chapter in the book, Ministering, Healing, and Deliverance. Uh, and uh, we'll quickly go over. There are some points there about the importance of signs, wonders, and miracles. And uh, we'll see why is it important uh, for God to work this way? Now, why, why did Jesus do healings and deliverances and release the supernatural right so just for us to kind of get a foundation from there and from the next class we will continue further in this um, topic so if you ha you don't have a copy uh, i think the uh, the students who are here in class don't have a physical copy doesn't matter i'll just take us through the content uh, one by one so uh, we see in scripture there are terms such as um, new birth. New birth refers to us being born again, okay? uh, us receiving salvation. Uh, there are terms in the ministry of Jesus, we uh, see words like he healed. Okay? Uh, they were healed. Healing. What is healing? Healing is supernatural recovery. Now, if we were to recover uh, by natural means, there are natural means to recover as well, like medication and uh, you know exercise, which is all good. We are not against any of this because God wants us well. But whenever the healing happens uh, by the power of God, that is supernatural. So it's not a natural route to recovery. It's a supernatural route to recovery. That's where the term healing is generally used. That, oh, this person got healed. Like even beyond that natural route of recovery, they are fine now. Similarly, when we uh, take deliverance. Deliverance, that term is used when someone is released from uh, any kind of demonic oppression. Like supernaturally, they were going through a struggle um, which was caused by a demonic uh, source uh, and now they are set free. So that would be deliverance. Miracles. What is a miracle? Miracle is when, um, you know, it, it will not come under the category of healing. Because healing is when someone is sick or some part of the body is sick. But miracle is when supernaturally, let's say, for example, a new organ is formed in the body. It's not about getting healed, right? It's about something new, something supernatural that God has done. Or there are instances where people have experienced maybe metal turning into bone. That's not a healing. Like healing is... There was a sickness and it got healed. But miracle is that did not exist. And now it exists. That's a miracle. So we see all this in the ministry of Jesus. Healings, deliverance, miracles, signs, 
wonders and uh, so we we recognize that you know this is the way in which he uh, he did his ministry okay he did a powerful ministry uh, a lot of teaching was a part of his ministry but also together with the teaching are the supernatural works now people can ask the question why can't we just have the word why miracles what is the importance of the supernatural so any thoughts on that please use the mic to answer why can't we why didn't jesus just teach why was there a need for the supernatural to show the power and glory of god for god's glory okay to reveal god's, god's glory. glory great yeah to reveal god's glory any other thoughts on why is it necessary yeah sometimes people don't trust easily in god's word so some if they will see supernatural something then they can trust okay okay so uh, there's a demonstration of god's power they can trust the word easily okay true yes any other reasons why uh, all this is necessary the supernatural the power of god and what do you think from what you have been exposed to thus far okay so what is not possible with man it is possible with god god is revealing that that yes it is possible by me okay so uh, that's true you know these are all men the, some of the reasons why the supernatural exists okay uh, but there are biblical reasons also why the supernatural exists and this is what we are going to discuss right now this is in our notes of uh, ministering healing and deliverance chapter 1 in the pdf version these points eight points are listed on page number 6 so we will go through them one by one so the first reason why uh, the supernatural is important is because miracles healing and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of god very early on in scripture right in the book of exodus exodus 15:26 when god introduced himself you know he says that i am the lord who heals you you know how how do you like that when god is introducing himself he's making it so clear and saying this is my nature i am the god who heals you he's not the god who puts sickness and disease on us he is the god who heals us so god is revealing his nature as a healing god that's his nature okay so the works of god reveal to us his nature he can only do what he is who he is and god spoke that to his people and said look i am the lord who heals you and the covenant name of god revealed at that time was jehovah rafa i have a covenant of healing with you and so even when jesus came jesus is the express image of god whoever god the father is that's who jesus was even he went about healing people why because our god is a healing god that's how god revealed himself we find that in many other instances god spoke the same thing and he said that i am your healer he spoke to moses and he told him that he would remove sickness and disease away from him or the people so we have a passage here from exodus chapter 23 verses 25 and 26 um okay so it's anyway basically here again god is saying that uh, 
he will bless the people he will bless their food he will bring healing to their bodies and also that he will fulfill the number of their days what does that mean fulfill the number of your days correct so healing god and one who fulfills the number of our days means that in god's nature he wants us to live our entire lives okay so a lot of people ask the question you know um like maybe it was god's will that someone should not have lived long or someone only needed to live uh, a short life to glorify him but that's not what scripture says right exodus 23 verses 25 and 26 god says look i am a healer i will heal you you will also fulfill the number of your days so who is god that's the basis for us to uh, talk about healing and deliverance and all of those things it starts with the very nature of god he's healing he wants all of us to have a long healthy life right there are scriptures where god promised uh, his, the children of israel i will remove sickness and disease away from you i'm going to take it away from you okay uh, so the nature of god is such and even in the book of psalms psalm 105 verse 37 uh, we read that when god brought the people out of egypt moses led the people out all of them came out of egypt scripture says there was none feeble among his tribes meaning feeble refers to weak weak so when god led his people there was none feeble among his tribes he was able to impart health and strength to all the people none it says none no one everyone was strong when they came out in god's nature is healing in god's nature uh, is his intention to give us a long life and so there are many many scriptures here in our notes i'll uh, look at one more scripture and then you know move forward this is uh, psalm 103 many of us in our own languages we pray uh, this passage right uh, every day basically it says uh, bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits verse 3 who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles here in this passage itself it's so clear what god's heart is for us forget not all his benefits all the blessings that we enjoy where is it coming from god is the source you know he blessed us with this life he blessed us with every opportunity he blessed us with you know good experiences our skill our knowledge our resources anything that we can say good it has come from god and in verse 3 the psalmist is also saying uh, who forgives all your iniquities thank god for jesus we have forgiveness for our sins as believers and who heals all your diseases all means all means all right there's no big or small sickness disease before god think about this even in the old testament the psalmist had a revelation he heals all my diseases whatever the issue whatever the problem my god is a healer and the god who heals you jehovah rafa right he brought them out with silver and gold and there was none feeble among them a healing god he will fulfill the number of our days he heals all my diseases 
So that is the very nature of God who redeems your life from destruction. Any kind of destruction. Does God want any one of us to be destroyed? No. He redeems. In fact, he takes us out from destruction. Okay. He uh, saves to the uttermost. Hebrews 7.25. That's the God we serve. That's the image, the nature of God. He saves us. And you know, uh, he satisfies us with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. So basically, it's a picture of a thriving life, a thriving life so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The eagle is a picture of strength, uh, you know, overcoming. They say the eagle overcomes uh, a stormy weather to rise above. So an arising, uh, a strong, thriving life. That's what God wants for all of us. That is in the nature of God. And God has spoken to us and said that that is who he is. And as we've been saying, Jesus is the express image of the Father. Hebrews chapter um, 1 and verse 3. So express image means, uh, we say, right, like a copy. Exact. What the Father is, Jesus is like that. What did Jesus do? Did he ever put sickness and disease on anyone? Any scripture we can find like that? Or did he ever tell any uh, sick person or oppressed person, I can't, I can't heal you? Right? Uh, there were situations, but even then, outside of the covenant also, Jesus healed when he saw faith. So what does that tell us about Jesus? He is expressing the nature of the Father. He never stopped anyone from receiving his goodness through healings, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders. Okay, So that is the basis. How are we saying that God heals today? How are we saying that you know God is not happy when people are suffering with all these issues? Because God's nature has not changed. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this is a biblical basis. We all gave some answers of why miracles still happen today. But this is the biblical basis. God has not changed. His nature has not changed. He has always done this. And this is what he desires, that all of us may be whole, well, forgiven, uh, be strong, you know, like the eagle. and. Uh, thrive in our lives right at any given point and uh, so we can be confident that okay this is what god wants now if we hear someone else say something else we have enough and more scripture to prove the point that we are stating right in god's nature there is healing in god's nature there is deliverance in god's nature there are miracles right so that is the first reason why we believe uh, in the supernatural Second reason, miracles reveal God's greatness. I think uh, Diksha said that God's greatness is revealed through it. Uh, in John chapter 2, there was a miracle that took place. What was that? Anyone? Yeah, Jesus turned water into wine. And the scriptures say, uh, John 2 verse 11, he manifested his glory. He manifested his glory. So, what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? The glory of God is who God is and what he does. Who God is and what he does. Now, if you take, for example, now I recall my school art class. In school, uh, when you are learning art, they'll give you some lines and some circles. They'll say, okay, you color this with this color, you color it with that color. And I would always do that and feel so bad because my art teacher was, um, you know, an incredible artist. All his paintings were put all across the art room. And I would look at all those paintings and think, why, why do we get to do this small job? <laughs> you know, color inside the line, color outside the line. I want to make a painting like one that is hanging over here. But as a kid, you know, and without knowing any art skills that's that's as much as i can produce i can't create the 
fantastic artistic pieces that my sir used to do right but if you ask him to paint and him to uh, come up with a piece it would be glorious right and it's revealing what he can do that's who he is that's what he can do and that's amazing whereas that cannot be done by anybody else it can only be done by him in the same way when we consider god his power his glory we say in deity right all powerful god all knowing god all present omniscient god that's who he is so what can he do think about it wow he can do everything is there anything that he cannot do that's the question we should ask not what can he do is there anything that he cannot do because that's the great god whom we have and that is the glory of god when god does a work when he does a miracle it's revealing this is who i am you know and glory of god always gets a response like wow it can't happen nobody can do this call anyone else to do it they can never do this only god can do it who god is what he can do that is the glory of god and so when the water turned into wine the scripture says jesus revealed his glory can water turn into wine impossible that's the only word we can all say impossible but can god do it of course he can right so when a miracle takes place when a healing takes place when a deliverance takes place there's no question that god did it it's he his glory is revealed god is showing himself so glory in another way to understand it is it's like god showing himself off that hey see my power this is my glory this is what i can do okay so miracles do that when we experience miracles uh, we can understand the power of god the glory of god okay and that's why they are so important and jesus also manifested the glory of god uh, so that the people can understand him uh, in jeremiah 32 verse 17 you know that expression which we just said can can he do this is not the question is there anything he cannot do <laughs> that's the question so jeremiah 32 17 says our lord god behold you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm there is nothing too hard for you there's nothing that you cannot do oh god okay so he manifests his glory by doing the miraculous works and that's why he continues to do it now the third reason why are there miracles third reason is because the god we serve is a compassionate god he is a loving um a merciful and compassionate god psalm 145 verses 8 and 9 the lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and great in mercy the lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works so he created us he created the world he did not abandon us he loves us so much that when uh, people are struggling people are in need people are uh, having questions he's gracious he's compassionate he's loving he's kind and miracles take place I don't know if you ever heard people say this but sometimes people say I was not even praying for it and I got healed uh you know so he's a loving god he's a compassionate god he does not want to see us in pain and suffering so we must have a very clear understanding of god's nature now if we believe opposite that god does not heal god does not want to reveal his glory god is not compassionate then we have every reason to believe that that people suffer and struggle in their difficulties 
God will not do anything. Right? Then we can believe that. But biblically, we understand that God's nature is to heal. God wants to reveal his glory. Third, he is a compassionate God. So even Jesus, Matthew 14, verse 14, when he saw the multitudes, it says, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. And as a result of being moved with compassion, what did he do? That verse says, he healed their sick. Okay, So, healing came because of what? Compassion. So today, if uh, God wants to heal us, what is the reason he wants to heal us? And there are many scriptures in our notes. You can go to uh, all of them and read. You know, he, he was moved with compassion. Whenever he saw someone who was unwell, right? Uh, he, he, his heart was moved for them. Like even the leper, the scripture actually says, Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. So where did the action of healing come from? The compassion of Jesus. So that is another reason why uh, miracles still happen and healings still happen. Okay, And uh, it's the same compassion. We'll just extend it a little further and say, when we are ministering to people, we must also have compassion. So without compassion, Jesus had compassion, God has compassion, but you know, if we stop there and we don't carry compassion, we will not be able to uh, serve people or as we call it, you know, minister, do ministry. So for ministry, we need compassion. So how we may feel like, okay, I don't have that kind of love for people, but Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So with the love of God, we can minister. Not my own love. Holy Spirit has put his love inside my heart. And I'm doing ministry with that love. It's not my own love. It's God's perfect love, agape, that he pours into my heart. And through that, I can release that compassion. So third reason why miracles are still valid is because of God's compassion. Uh, and we can also do that. We'll, we'll come to it later on. So the fourth reason why miracles are important is because they get people's attention. Okay, They get people's attention. Uh, we see this even in the ministry of Jesus. When something happens, right? <coughs> Others, the person who has experienced it becomes alert. Um, there are many stories, testimonies, uh, you know, some of you in my own experience and, you know, in uh, like part of my uh, family members, some testimonies also, when people got healed, they started believing in God. Till they got healed, they didn't, they did not, they heard the message, but they didn't respond. But after they experienced something, right, uh, it got their attention. And they started to trust God. They started to move forward with God. So miracles, healings, something supernatural, it has that effect on people. Look at this. When Jesus was doing ministry, Luke chapter 5 and verse 15, it says about Jesus that the report concerning him, uh, you know, it, it went around. It went around. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So people were interested to receive their own healing. And so they all started coming, multitudes. We see in many places, it was not just uh, the people of that city. Sometimes people from surrounding cities, they came. Why? Hey, there is Jesus. He's doing miracles. He's healing. He's delivering. Come, let's go. Right? And you remember that lady, Mark chapter 5, how in the crowd she struggles and she comes. She would have heard from someone that it's happening. Come on, let's go. 
let's take our miracle so many people coming to jesus you know centurion coming to jesus a father whose daughter is sick coming to jesus how did they all come to know they heard and it's got their attention okay a miracle happened in their lives and you know they begin to serve god you remember that man legion his far away outcast now that uh, he is uh, delivered he starts to serve god the woman at the well uh, in samaria one prophetic word from jesus she starts to tell everybody jesus is here the messiah is here so miracles have that effect on people and they point people to god so whenever miracles happen one is people come second is <coughs> people get to know who god is right they glorify god so there are passages of scripture uh, like mark 9 8 all these verses are in the notes so don't worry about uh, you know writing out every single one uh, uh, matthew 9 8 where it says the multitude saw it they marveled and glorified god so when we see a miracle one is uh, yeah we are like oh wow god can do this but the other thing is we glorify god that we say wow you know how how is this possible can you believe it uh, only god can do this and we glorify him and then of course you know it brings conviction where people uh, turn to god and they can even come to a point of decision and they accept christ um so a miraculous encounter uh, we we know about that with regard to apostle paul you know how he had and uh, uh also he became blind and then uh his blindness was gone many things happened but the whole thing was supernatural and uh, he turned to god there was conviction in his heart he accepted christ he accepted the uh, work of god for laid out before him and these kind of miracles uh it's it's necessary it's necessary for us to serve god it's necessary for people to turn to god and uh, not only for one or two people in fact entire cities can get uh, god can get the attention of entire cities because of the miracle working power of god we know what happened in jerusalem right when the early church they started uh, having the grace of god and performing miracles people around were observing and they were interested in what god was doing even jesus in Ma matthew 11 he states <coughs> regarding uh, uh, places called uh, chorazin and uh, bethsaida okay i don't know if i'm pronouncing that name correctly but he says to them that if the miracles that were done in you you know were done elsewhere people would have believed so entire cities can actually respond to miracles cities can be transformed jesus is speaking to a city and saying that because of signs wonders and miracles by now you should have repented so it has the capacity to draw people to god which is why we should not neglect signs wonders and miracles now let me place before us three more reasons um uh, in in today's session the next reason or the fifth reason why uh, miracles are important is because jesus gave importance to miracles if jesus did not give importance then we won't talk about it but he himself gave importance so we read that uh, he performed many signs many signs so many signs that they could not even record all of them in the gospels or in the bible so is jesus moving in signs wonders and miracles yes he is giving importance so why should we say it's not good it's not helpful jesus knows better and he is giving importance to miracles so jesus gave importance and this is uh, in the passage john 20 verses 30 and 31 so there were many signs that he did even when people questioned him 
if he is the messiah what did he do he pointed to the miracles in john chapter 10 he says if you don't believe me fine believe the miracles that i am doing can you imagine that's the way jesus spoke he said you got to believe the miracles because they are testifying of me so jesus is saying believe in the miracles right uh, it, it's not something we are making up it's all in the bible jesus gave importance to miracles and that's why we are talking so much about the supernatural you know at one point john the baptist got uh, very discouraged nothing was happening you know jesus has come but um, uh, john was in the prison things were not going right so john sent his disciples to jesus and said please go check ask him you know if he is the one can you imagine it was john who baptized jesus now we can ask john john what happened to you what like are you okay you were the one who said behold the lamb of god now you're sending your disciples a season of discouragement he's so discouraged he's like jesus is here but why are we in this situation is this really the messiah and he went he told his disciples go check is he really the messiah okay john the baptist is doubting then what happened you know, when uh, they went with this question to jesus you know what jesus did one answer this is in uh, matthew chapter 11 verses 1 to 6 you can read over there he doesn't say anything he heals he delivers he does a miracle work miracles he only tells the disciples go and tell john whatever you saw i don't want to say anything more okay that is jesus is answer he didn't say okay 20 points why i am the messiah take take this pdf copy give it to john <laughs> right no nothing no explanation he just does all the signs miracles tells the disciples go and tell john what you saw what i did what does that mean it means even jesus is showing himself to be messiah with the supernatural if there is no supernatural jesus is saying don't believe me i'm not the messiah if i can't then don't believe me but go tell john what you saw meaning the supernatural is the testimony that i am the christ i am the messiah jesus is giving importance to signs wonders and miracles and so if we today say no it doesn't exist it's not biblical this is not what the word of god says there's enough and more evidence where jesus is supporting the supernatural right and so we must also go with the supernatural and when his own disciples questioned him in john chapter 14 even there you know jesus talks about the supernatural and he doesn't stop there you know, he goes on later to say look you will do greater things than these the supernatural will be here it's here to stay it's not going anywhere i am going to the father but you i am going to lead you into the supernatural so jesus did the supernatural supported the supernatural he even said that the supernatural was a great um, evidence that he is the messiah and for us to fulfill the great commission you know in mark chapter 16 we see go uh, you know you lay hands on the sick and they will recover right all kinds of things those who believe in my name these signs shall follow them right and the supernatural many things are listed out there the sick will be healed the lepers will be cleansed the dead will be raised it's part of the great commission we are supposed to fulfill the great commission and jesus sent us to do the great commission now the sixth reason why we believe in miracles is because the kingdom of god comes with power the kingdom of god rules over the kingdom of darkness and whenever jesus did miracles 
he said this the kingdom is here the kingdom is you know upon you right let me just read one passage matthew 10 verses 7 and 8 this, it's it states like this as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give so these are the works of the kingdom manifesting as we go and uh, take the kingdom the works will manifest right seventh reason why we believe in signs wonders and miracles is because the gospel is supposed to be preached with accompanying signs that's how jesus did it that's how the early church did it the apostles did it and we are also commissioned to do it and we'll talk more about it later on uh, look at this about jesus in hebrews chapter 2 okay uh, it says that jesus when he went and preached right when he did the work of god god bore witness through signs and wonders jesus was doing the ministry how did God back up the ministry of Jesus? Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. We see God bearing witness with signs and wonders and various miracles. So that's like, you know, how these days people ask, where is your ID card? Do you really belong to this organization? Show your ID card. Prove it. Prove it. Right? Jesus was doing the ministry. You know, what was his, uh, like, a, that stamp? Signs, wonders, miracles. Jesus preached. Miracles were happening. That's like God proving, stamping. That's his ID card. See the miracles. They talk for themselves. I don't have to say anything more. Right? So, the Great Commission must be preached with accompanying signs just the way Jesus preached it. And finally, the eighth point is when the supernatural happens, we believe for more of the supernatural. So whenever we see a, a miracle take place, it happened in the case of Jesus. Multitudes followed him. When they saw, oh, this man, he multiplied uh, bread, more people started following him because who knows what he'll multiply tomorrow right he may multiply some other food so let's follow him manifestation of the supernatural today encourages us for believing in god for more supernatural in the days to come so these are the eight major reasons that the bible gives us okay these are biblical we are not making any of this up but eight reasons the bible gives us for us to believe in the supernatural and to manifest the supernatural. So if there are any questions or any, um, you know, thoughts regarding this matter, I would uh, just open up the time you could ask. Eight reasons before us. Because they reveal the nature of God, miracles, they reveal God's greatness, they demonstrate God's compassion, they have a powerful effect on people, especially those who don't believe. Uh, Jesus gave importance to miracles, the kingdom comes with power, the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs, and miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural. There are eight reasons, eight reasons uh, why we are believing. Sure. So, any questions regarding this or maybe a point you want to make before we pray and close? Okay. So, how can we apply the supernatural in our lives? Um, we need to believe for it. Okay. Believe based on the word of God. So in this course, that's what we are going to see. We are going to see how God um, speaks to us, how Jesus spoke 
regarding the disciples and said that we will have Holy Spirit power, that the supernatural will manifest through our lives. So it's like, as we are going to study all these things, it will become clearer and clearer why it's actually so easy to believe for the supernatural. Right? So mainly, Word of God. Go by what God is speaking, and we are going to build our faith in what God has already spoken. Yeah. Sure. So uh, if there are no questions, we can wrap up for today. We'll keep getting deeper into the supernatural. But today, we have some biblical basis to believe for miracles. All right. So with that, we wrap up our class. Let's pray and uh, let's close. Abba Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, and helping us, O oh God, to understand through your word that the supernatural is for us. And uh, God, that uh, you are a supernatural God. Father, let uh, us experience the supernatural and manifest the supernatural, Father, in a mighty way through our lives. We thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, thank you everyone. God bless you and uh, have a good weekend ahead.